Central Avenue is a corridor where the city would like to spur some economic growth, and its buildings will soon look something like this. The urban core of Dubuque has been somewhat fallow and dormant in terms of its relation to art in the public domain. Voices Mural Project is an initiative the first time in the history of Dubuque to place large-scale art in the public domain. Hopefully we can put Dubuque on the map as a place of, of vitality, culture, imagination, and bravery. A group plans to paint more of them on Central Avenue despite some concerns. The historic buildings are a treasure in this neighborhood. That's why Councilwoman Kate Larson wants to protect them. Uh, I think that it's just important to protect what makes Dubuque special. Let's just make sure that we're telling the story of the people that live around here too and the businesses that rent. Anytime you do anything in the public domain, people will hazard an opinion. A lot of times it takes the form of an aesthetic opinion. Oh, I like that piece of artwork, or I don't. Oh, I don't like the colors, I don't like the mythology, I don't like the composition. Oh, I really like that, that's inspiring. That's not what Voice is doing. We're just triggering a movement. Anybody that had enough interest in coming here today is going to be on the side of pushing art forward in their communities and bringing public art onto the streets and being brave about getting out there and changing the vibe in your community so people will want to stay. So new people will want to come in and say, that place is cool. I want to be there. I want to be in that community. This is Dubuque, Iowa. And we're going to change it right here, right now, with your assistance and your bravery and your love and your attention and your passion to the work in each other. Union's doing it, uh, Jerry's Pond is doing it, Diamond Vogel Campus. This is all going to be beautiful art. Sam Mulgrew, our captain, he's the guy that instigated this whole thing. We had our last gallery show at Voices in 2015, and that was a murals project. And people like Gaia came into this town to do murals inside in this came a little area and said, where the hell are your murals? Where's the public art around here? We're going, oh, excuse me, we're so embarrassed. We'll do that next year. So we started up right away. We started in the downtown historical corridor, the bang. This year, phase two, in my opinion, was enrollment, consensus building, empowering local people from the creative class. And we are very, very fortunate to have him because uh, he's the real deal. They introduce Guy. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So, um, thank you first and foremost for having me. My name is Gaia. I started in New York City. Ultimately, what I ended up doing was taking this very naive um, predilection towards uh, seeing what was already on the walls in a city that is the genesis of graffiti and then trying to reproduce what I saw. These are giant posters that I was hand painting and putting up all over the city um, and I began to gyrate. I began to think of the city from a graffiti standpoint. Graffiti, as we understand it today, was started by black and brown people from African diasporas in New York City and from a lot of Latino diasporas in New York City. What we understand today is it began as a response to divestment and a response to a lack of opportunity and a response to creating new networks and new institutions that weren't dependent on oppressive systems. You know, like just certain guys, like say from my neighborhoods, me and a couple of other guys, and we like when we write, we all go together, and that's like our right and click. But there's other guys that go with their friends, and they got right and clicks. When you think of a name, you know everybody has a name. It's like to signify you. I learned Chicago because of graffiti. Like I would like literally just take a ride on the subway, 
and go from this end of the city to that area. Like, oh, you can't go to these areas. These are bad neighborhoods. But for us, it was like um, freedom. Freedom to express. Oh, we did that to get out of the neighborhood. We painted to get out of the streets. From my perspective, that was the most positive thing that we could be doing because there was like so many things working against us as a, as a young Latino male. When you're a writer, you see a nice clean wall, right away you get the urge to start writing on it. Because uh, it's like a graffiti instinct, you know, it's in you already. Like uh, if you have a marker on you see a nice clean wall, you just say, wow, a beautiful clean wall, all this space for myself. You start writing all kinds of things, doing all the designs you want and everything. You just you go wild on the wall. You do everything that comes to your imagination. That was my upbringing. That was like, you know, what basically made me get up in the morning, travel the city, get a job, work, become productive to like feed this addiction. Of, of painting and getting my name out there. Well, I think maybe it's a pattern of the times. I believe it's youngsters who are trying to find expression. Maybe the hard times, social upheaval, could be a form of art also. It's kind of like art. That's the way I look at it. It's art, you know. You have it in the mid to late 80s, the end of this remarkable movement as they begin to police graffiti and also not only criminalize, but racialize graffiti. Hey, is it fun or just dumb? Yes, either it's fun or just dumb. Make trouble everywhere and never seem to care. Hey, is it fun or just dumb? I think graffiti is neat. It's our way to communicate. Graffiti is sneaky, done when people think nobody is watching. I can't see the fun or honesty in that. Besides, what they write is neither art nor literature. In the early 80s, it was like um, the worst thing. Even the gangs hated us. The, the school, the, the police, the city, everybody was against us. We have a special graffiti squad. Uh, consisting of a sergeant and about a dozen men who are particularly knowledgeable in the workings of the graffitis and the identification of them. If there is such a thing as an average graffiti artist, he is male and between the ages of 12 and 16. Most often is asked the question, why do these kids go to so much trouble just to write their names? To some, Writing has become more than a sport. It is an art and an important part of their lives. This art form was created in the streets and in the subways by kids that were bored and had nothing to do. This was, is, and will always be a movement. I think it's a step in the right direction, although it's a slow step. We need something a lot more revolutionary. Whatever message it wants to convey has to be dug out of it. I look at it, right? But often I can't see the message. I can't hear it, but I know it's there. The message is revolution. So we've got it all good to go. Group two, who's first? Here day one in front of Ace Hardware. We just spent two days thinking about theory, thinking about history, and then thinking about logistical application. Now we're actually getting into that application. Spray. Stop. Spray. Stop. We're gonna take the evening off and then people can, at their own leisure, come and observe the projection. And essentially all that is, is taking my design and then projecting that onto the surface to then trace out my framework or my sketch for the wall so we can come back tomorrow and um, continue different aspects of the mural. The response to our workshop was far greater than we had anticipated. And we didn't burden one artist with 
30 or 40 or 50 people. So we were fortunate to have Lewis come in and say, I'm, I've done workshops before, I'll take some of these people under my wing and they can paint with me. We're out here at the Carpenters Union. Um, we're basically just getting the wall prep. These guys have been here since 9.30 in the morning, so I mean, I'm more than grateful for this right now. Hopefully we get done with this in another maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and uh, then we're gonna start with uh, adding color to the background. It's okay if it doesn't completely cover all the white. We just wanna get some color in there, because we're gonna fade other colors together. So right now we're doing a fill-in and then we're fading it out as we go so we can blend everything together so it has a nice fade to it. The biggest canvas I've ever painted was four feet. So this is a whole nother process being out here with the elements. I was just cruising along and saw the project and had a couple questions about it and then I was asked if I wanted to get on board with it. So it's a good way to get the community to come together and good group effort. Art outside, art on the sidewalks, art in the streets. It's impacting urban life, it's transforming urban life. Art is effective because it's very democratic. Art has a meditative quality, so when people confront art in the public domain, you will frequently see them stop and pause. It has the power to reflect on ourselves as a civilization. It's zeitgeist, it's tapping into the spirit of the times. It's just another thing that's good for the city. I don't see how it could be a bad thing. When we heard that the murals were going up, that was actually one of the things that kind of led us to kind of come to this area. At first, I was hesitant because, you know, you heard a lot of negative, like, you know, defacing historical buildings, and I kind of watched it myself. And I love that it brings people downtown. And whatever you can do to start a conversation or livening up your downtown, it's a positive thing. They're, they're part of the community now. You had, if they were gone, it'd be kind of sad. So this is what they've been doing in downtown Dubuque. Check it out. This one is really cool. I had no idea what Voices was until I got here. And it was like, oh, there's artwork. And I was like, whoa. And to be the first ones, it blew my mind. I'm more welcome in this town than I am in my own city. I think that the impact will ultimately be that people will go out and feel empowered to do it. It gives people the ability to celebrate the First Amendment, to celebrate this democracy, to celebrate diversity. That's what we hope will happen in the view.